DU has been showing us what we can do, and it's that can-do spirit that I believe in. Don't forget, Ducks Unlimited. If it feels like DUTV is spending considerable energy in Kansas this season, then you're watching a lot of DUTV. And that's a good thing. For this episode, we're in Southeast Kansas hunting public land with Field Hudnall, who joins up with a team of local Ducks Unlimited volunteers. DU volunteers often know the best places to hunt, and they are also the key to DU's historic conservation success. Nearly 50,000 DU volunteers enjoy hands-on roles in conservation. Now let's join Field and the Kansas crew. So I've been talking to a buddy of mine, Dwight McElroy. He lives in southeast Kansas. He's been sending me pictures throughout the year and they've just been having some phenomenal hunts. So I gave him a call, said, you got birds? He said, sure do, come on out. So we pack up the gear and we head to southeast Kansas. Anywhere you looked, north, east, south, west, we had him. He got down here and then it did a complete 180 on us and it seemed like the birds just went everywhere else but the spots that I'd saw him in. It seems like it never fails, you know, Murphy's Law. You get excited, you start heading to a trip, you know, going on a trip, and he had birds, but then we got a warm spell that Southeast Kansas, Oklahoma, it really put a damper on the hunt. A lot of the guys lost the birds, ponds and sloughs started thawing out, and the birds just scattered. We planned on hunting a couple different spots. It wasn't gonna pan out, but we actually decided we're gonna hit the public water. The first morning we hook up with a couple buddies of Dwight's and we're hunting a lake, it's a reservoir. Dwight and myself, we decided to kind of tuck back a little bit because there's not a whole lot of cover. And we let his buddies get up there and we're gonna let them have the first shot. Right here on the left, right here on the left. <laughs> Awesome, guys. I didn't even see them coming in, but these two gadwalls come right over our right shoulder, and I just hear, you know, take them, and as soon as I look over, Dwight's buddy Matt comes up, boom, boom, and just rolls out a beautiful double. We had an afternoon hunt planned, so you know we're sitting there thinking, you know what, it's getting a little late, we've got a little bit of a drive, let's go ahead and start picking up. As soon as we started picking up, we had all the decoys in the boat, we're getting ready to head out, the ducks were everywhere. And you're just, you know, kicking yourself in the butt, thinking if we just would have stuck it out another hour or so, there's no telling what could have happened. So we started out on public water, we might as well end the day on public water. We decided to travel a little bit and we're going to meet up with Scott Pauley and Tyler Stein. 
they're young guys and they're all heavily involved in Ducks Unlimited. Dwight's chairman of his chapter. Our chapter in here to show, it's just an overall success and we enjoy putting in all the hard work towards Ducks Unlimited to see the money go back into areas around our area, thriving for the next generations to come so they can continue hunting. Scott is actually the chairman of his chapter in St. Paul as well. Scott was all excited because they just had their banquet. He's excited about Ducks Unlimited, he's, he's excited about conservation, and he loves waterfowl. We put on our yearly event every year just to get Ducks Unlimited more involved around this area, get our kids out every now and then on some youth hunts, and just a great conservation group. Everybody should check it out, see what they have to offer. Well, all you can say is it's a beautiful afternoon in southeast Kansas and we're hunting public land. We hunted a different spot this morning. Didn't do too bad, saw a lot of ducks, had a good time. Right now we're actually on state property. There's a lot of hunters in here. We had to walk a pretty good distance back. If you're willing to walk, you can get to areas where there's not a lot of pressure. We got four coming across the dike. We originally thought that being tucked in out of the wind, those ducks might want to get in there, but we decided we need to change our game plan. Now, we want to move out onto the point where our decoys are going to be the most visible in this hole. And as that sun starts going down, we want to try to keep sun on our decoys as long as possible. Right off the bat, we had a drake come in right off the point, sucked right in the decoys, offered us a great shot. It set the tone for the rest of the afternoon. Take him. Very nice. We'll take him like that. There you go, good job. Take that great. <laughs> At Ducks Unlimited, wetlands and other waterfowl habitats are the products we produce. Getting those products on the ground can be an expensive, time-consuming endeavor. Our secret weapon is an army of dedicated volunteers. Since its founding, more than 77 years ago, DU has been a volunteer-driven and volunteer-run organization. Today, volunteers are still the lifeblood of the organization. Our president is a volunteer. Our board of directors are all volunteers. They are driven by a passion to give their time and their money for the DU mission. Likewise, our primary fundraising strategy for more than 77 years has been the local DU event. Approximately 50,000 dedicated volunteers across the country manage and coordinate more than 4,000 local fundraising events every year. These events raised in the neighborhood of $50 million for conservation and generate about 400,000 DU memberships. What drives so many volunteers to give of their time and their resources? Many are waterfowl hunters who want to give back to the resource. Many are community-minded individuals who recognize the importance of DU's mission. And many enjoy working with others in a positive social atmosphere. But all of them are united by passion for conserving and protecting the most important wildlife habitats in North America. Attending a DU event in your community is one of the easiest and most important ways you can contribute to the DU mission. When you become a DU volunteer, you're taking the next step and becoming a conservation leader. Help us continue more than 75 years of conservation success. Visit ducks.org today to find out about volunteer opportunities where you live.
This afternoon was an awesome hunt because we're hunting with young guys that are heavily involved in their Ducks Unlimited chapter. I mean, they're, they're chairmen of their chapter. And we're hunting a public walk-in area is possible because of Ducks Unlimited's efforts. I mean, right there, there's a sign. You know, they were heavily involved and they help the public hunter. Take him. Right side, you ready? Take him. Somebody over there, I wouldn't want to meet in the alley at high noon. That was quick. This spot was going to be the ticket because the way we were set up, we were in the shadows. The sun finally popped back out again. And when those ducks would come in, they weren't focusing on us. They were focused on the decoys. It turned out to be an awesome hunt. Yeah, they're coming back. Take them. So we knock out this Drake Mallard and he hits the water and that wind was howling and he, you know, kind of drifted to the other side of the marsh and I don't know, you know, here I am, the oldest one in the group and I'm the one that had to walk across to get the duck. I tell you, kids these days. Get him. Nice oh, shot. shot. Nice shot, Bill. Thank you. So the afternoon hunt turned out to be awesome. We're ready for the next day's hunt, and what we experienced was a major weather change. We went from 60 degrees to about 15. The temperature dropped, the wind's blowing, the sun's out. Who knows what's gonna happen? We're out this afternoon looking for a place to hunt in the morning. And uh, you know, from, from some recent rains, we've got a bunch of sheet water in some of these fields. And we saw some birds going in from a distance. We kind of pulled up here off this gravel road, got closer. And a trusty set of binoculars is, is an amazing thing to have. Um, I always keep some in my center console when we're on trips. And uh, it allows you to kind of figure out exactly where those birds are sitting, exactly where they're coming in. Are they on this side of the tree row or the other side? We spend a ton of time chasing ducks and geese and cut corn fields and cut bean fields. And when you're dry field hunting, where the birds are, are at in the field the evening before is really important. You know, they may have started on one side of the field and they fed their way across. Nine times out of 10, in my experience, wherever they left the field at dark is where they're gonna come back and kind of start feeding again in the morning. So in a big field, if you got a section of corn, that's huge, you know, a mile by a mile is a long ways. And, it, and a good set of binoculars and paying attention to where, what part of that field they, they left, I think can really help you out. Another thing that we found a lot of success doing when we're out scouting, is you know really dissect the spot that you're going to hunt the next morning. Get out your weather weather channel app on your phone, you know, and, and see what the wind direction is going to be in the morning compared to what it is right then. And you know, think about the, the list of gear you need. You know, are we going to hunt out of layout blinds? Are we going to be standing in the timber? Um, are we going to take mojos, full bodies, floaters? You know, all the stuff that we need and kind of put together a list. You know, it's easy when you get home at the end of the day or if you're on the road in a, in a hotel to kind of forget about all the little extras that you might need for the next morning. You know, there's gonna be a four mile an hour wind, we need a dirt cord to make the water move. So I think kind of when you're scouting and when you're with your buddies and you're putting that game plan together like everybody does, jot down a list of all the things you need for the next day. It'll help you not forget, um, you know, that one thing that really could make the hunt incredible.
Today I want to talk about the top five reasons you miss a duck. Now, we all know there's more than five reasons. The first one is not focusing on the target enough. You've got to keep your eye on the bird, and not just the whole bird, but a little part of the bird. If you can look at the bill or that white ring on a mallard's neck, you'll have a lot better chance of hitting it, and you'll put your shot at the front end where you want it to go to kill the duck cleanly. The second one is keeping your head on the gun. These two go together because the old saying among target shooters is, head on the stock, eye on the rock. Keeping your head on the gun, not lifting it up to watch the bird fall. As soon as you lift your head up, the gun shoots high. As soon as you lift your head up to watch that bird fall, it doesn't fall every time. With a duck gun, where a lot of people are shooting really high kicking, high velocity loads, the tendency to bring your head off the gun just because you're getting kicked exists there too. So that's something you really have to be careful about. Third thing is don't aim the gun. Aiming the gun, as soon as you try to aim a shotgun, it stops moving. As soon as the gun stops moving, you shoot behind. You can even think you're ahead of a target, and as soon as you look at the gun and pull the trigger, you miss behind it every time. So keeping your eye off the gun, on the bird. Four is rushing the shot. You don't want to, you know, ducks come in, you want to make sure that you have one picked out of the flock. When someone calls a shot, make sure your eye's on the target before you ever move the gun. The gun doesn't know where to go until you've got your eyes on the target. Then your eyes will send your hands to the right place. Finally, five. Once you've got your eyes on the bird and you start to move the gun, don't be in a hurry. Move the gun in time with the target. You'll get a much better feel for the shot. If you move it fast, all you do is bring the gun into your line of sight, make your eyes go to it, and you miss. Move it slowly, keep your eye on the bird, pull the trigger. Those are the things to think about and to work on when you practice, and that's Duck Gun for DUTV. My favorite part about waterfowl hunting is all the creative stuff. Everything from the calling to specially setting decoys. What we're gonna do starting off, what I like to do is put just a cluster of decoys. You want wads of decoys tight, like they're in a feeding situation. There's a lot of food there. And they wanna land where the food is, so you wanna show that. So by having feeders up closer to the blinds, and then your actives out here like they're ducks that just landed, and the first couple flocks will show you what's gonna happen. So then you have to make a decision. Is it working, or do we need to make a change? And we might be up changing decoys after the first group, but we'll see what happens. This group on the left. Take it, Greg. There we go. We just made a quick change. We pushed the decoys out a little bit further. We had two ducks come in. So even though the wad of about 200 didn't come in. Get ready. <laughs> well, boys. Well, that was our last shot. Overall, this trip was awesome. You know, we experienced challenges and we adapted. Dwight, you know, being heavily involved with Ducks Unlimited, he knew other people that he's met through Ducks Unlimited, like Scott and Towers. So we were like, you know what? If it's going to be tough, let's just go ahead and have fun with this and let's hit the public ground. And then this afternoon, we saw tons of ducks. Beautiful sight. I mean, when you get a sunset and you get thousands of ducks just in the sky circling around and you can scratch out a few drakes, there's nothing to complain about that. 
Yes, Kansas was a real go-to state for DUTV this season. The Sunflower State holds all of the necessities for ducks during migration. But Kansas means more to waterfowl than food and accommodation. Kansas hunters are big-hearted supporters of Ducks and Ducks Unlimited. They raise well over $1 million there annually for wetland conservation. To date, these efforts have conserved more than 20,000 acres in Kansas alone. And, as in other states, Many of the dollars raised here are used for conservation work up and down the flyways. Thank you to the duck hunters and to the DU volunteers in Kansas. And thanks to DU supporters across North America. See you all next time on DU TV.